Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines The British Challenge with me, Pug Gaming. So I hope you are all well and you've been having a good week. My week's not been too bad, been a little bit hectic, hence why the videos haven't been coming through as quickly as I'd intend to. But I am working on a lot of stuff in the moment so keep your eyes out. Anyway, episode 33 is all about Santapod the drag strip race. So for you guys that don't know much about Santapod Raceway, it's located in Bedfordshire in England and it's actually a drag strip that was put on top of a disused Second World War airbase uh, which was at RAF Poddington. So the actual strip itself is pretty much where the planes used to take off. Obviously a lot of um, rework has been done to allow that to be used. But um, a very interesting historic place. It's a place that I went many times in my youth and they also hold big car show rallies and stuff like that here so what I wanted to do I thought what the perfect combination this will be to incorporate both we got the historic feel from the old World War II um, airport or hangar whatever you want to class it as and we've also got the drag strip and sort of a car show sort of location so I'm going to try and combine the two together um, we're going to add a camping area as well because it is one of those uh, places where you come and you sort of stay over for a one one night or two night sort of uh, uh, sort of episode. They have all sorts of stuff there, food and drink, have a stage for music as well. So it's the perfect combination to add a lot of things into a small space. So as you can see from the time lapse in the background, and apologies for this, but it's going to have to be a complete time lapse as there was a good sort of 12 hours into this build. Even when I cut it all down before I even put the time lapse on, I think I got it to around six hours. So obviously that's far too long to be uploading onto YouTube. So we have to have a sort of time lapse here. But I'm hoping it's not too fast and you can still sort of see and work out what I'm doing here. We'll have a good view at the end in sort of normal time to really excel what I've done and give you guys an opportunity to spark some flair and inspiration. So the first thing to do was obviously to start on the actual um, quarter mile track in my opinion so I found some very nice um, grandstands which are very similar actually to um, what they actually have at Santa Pod. Obviously like I say this is a build to the best of my ability with what assets we have on the uh, sort of workshop so it's not going to be perfect but it's going to hopefully resemble the actual um, build and layout of Santa Pod. that's what the plan was to be honest. Um, but not at, you know not not exactly. I wanted to have a bit of flair and add my own little bits in as well. So you'll see that take shape as we move on here. Now I did spend a lot of time researching the actual Santa Pod Raceway, looking on Google for images, zooming in on Google Maps, um, and I've had a few people ask me how do you get your inspiration and what do you do to sort of get down the actual um, builds you do, and pretty much it's all inspiration. I pretty much use Google Maps, uh, looking at areas that I'm trying to build my sort of builds upon, um, having a look at the surrounding areas and sort of combining it all together as well as my actual own inspiration. So the best thing I can suggest to you guys is pretty much just open your eyes, have a look around, um, try and have a look around your local area, go for some drives, etc. But if you haven't got the time or ability to do that, just check out Google Maps, check out some images. Google has millions of uh, images of local areas that you wanted to look for um, and just yeah, get an idea I mean the roads lay out ro laying down the roads is probably the most difficult part that I've found in the past um, so I do have to take quite strong inspiration at times on sort of road layouts uh, one thing I want to improve in my builds um, to try and do that myself but just jumping onto Google Maps and searching for a location and sort of just copying the way the roads work. Uh, the main roads are the easy bits, it's more of a case of the little housing estates that are quite difficult in my eyes to sort of get down and make it look realistic, especially for a British theme. So that would be my sort of main tips for you guys for building your own sort of, well starting off your own builds is just take inspiration and also to take inspiration from others I mean the community now on City Skylines is absolutely amazing jump onto all the forums jump onto reddit have a look on YouTube there's so many people I've got I mean I'm following a lot of good youtubers so if you want to check out mine have a look on there I've got a reference pad uh, of all the people I follow and just get inspiration from everyone it's uh, the best thing about this game to be honest it's uh, a game that no one can win and no one can be technically better than someone else it's all down to their own sort of 
their own visions, I guess, which is what's so amazing and why we never see one build that's very similar to the other. Everyone has their own different styles and, you know, my style for the British Challenge will be a hell of a lot different to someone else's idea on the uh, on a the British theme and that is what makes this game so unique to every individual player and that's what makes it such a great game in my opinion. But anyway, enough plug-in of this amazing game, let's get back into this. So we built the main racetrack here. What I've done is I found the uh, rally um, barriers, I guess they're classed as, and pop these down on the actual uh, walls here and that to me looks perfect. If you have a look at the Santa Pod racetrack, they have all these uh, advertisement boards along the barriers themselves. So, using the Move It mod, as always, taking full advantage of this amazing mod, I was able to do this a lot quicker um, than I anticipated. And I actually use the oil spill here um, as sort of tyre tracks, which <laughs> works really well, to be honest. There are the um, decors of skid marks etc but that's more of a sort of large surface area they're not individual so using these oil spills it really can create a good um, sort of wheel spinning strip sort of thing the only thing that I did find a little bit disappointing but I had to deal with this in the end and I'll explain to you why after is the actual track itself Santa Pot's track and a lot of um, actual drag strips have a lot darker concrete now I did look into changing the road colours and I did in the end give up on that factor. Um, the main reason being is because I, if I had a darker road I wouldn't be able to add all these um, extra decors etc. And I think that's what really makes this pop out. It really makes it boom to me by having all these extra bits and all the detailing on the road. So I decided against that in the end and uh, to be honest, as you can see here, once it rains, it does actually make the uh, concrete go a lot darker and that looks a lot more realistic. So we'll pretend that um, this is what it looks like all the time, but you know. So once that was down, that was pretty much taking shape. I really did enjoy doing this part. And we um, put down some a couple of cars as well to really sort of influence the idea of what's going on here at this racetrack. Um, and adding a few of the emergency service vehicles around and then we've done a little line of cars coming in here as well for other people who want to go on the actual tri uh, strip it tends to this tends to be what it's like at uh, Santa Pod you have a long line of um, all these souped up cars waiting to see what their best um, quarter mile is three quarter mile whatever you want to do and there's quite a lot of nice um, car props actually on the workshop for this sort of uh, design build so certainly have a check at all the the car props there's a good few Subarus on there and some rally cars which works out perfect for this okay so that was pretty much the completion of the sort of main starting grid of the um, drag strip so the next bit now was to move on to creating the couple of zones in this area so looking at the layout of the map when events are on at Santa Pod you, there's a food area down this bottom corner here there's obviously the camping area, which is where all the um, gravel paths will be. That's what we'll do a bit later on. Um, and then along the side of the strip, behind the stage, um, or the stadium, whatever you want to class them as, the seating area, is where you tend to see all the sort of club cars bringing out and showing off their cars, etc. Along with all the merchandise as well. So I wanted to get across both of those, well, all three of those aspects. Three, or was it four? Four of those aspects. So camping area food area and the sort of merchandise and sort of car stands area and also we're going to add in a um, stage as well for music so rather than using my own I'm going to use the ones from the workshop this time around which are absolutely amazing as well so let's get on with this so the tents are what you tend to see in this sort of a build um, they work out really well actually I wanted to try and keep some of the colours the same um, and I did actually try and copy one of the um, events that I saw um, a few images of on Google um, on Google Images so I tried to lay this out as best as I can to sort of create that realism but at the end of the day for these sort of builds you can pretty much place things wherever you want so long as you don't overdo it you can certainly get away with creating that realistic feel
Okay, so I'm going to jump in here and pretty much let you know what we're doing here. So this is the camping area. So there's quite a lot of nice um, tents around now in the workshop. We've got the caravans as well, some camper vans. So in terms of um, sort of realism, we've got a lot going now. Um, there's some RV trucks here which aren't so realistic in terms of um, what you tend to find in Britain, but it adds to it. And I wanted to let you know that this bit of the design took absolutely ages. I decided to do it all freehand because it felt a lot more realistic in my eyes rather than sort of copy and paste in um, sort of zones etc and the idea was I was going to put all the tents down first and the caravans first and then put the cars to the caravans and the tents so it looked more realistic so you know there's a tent per car in that sense which started off well and I must admit I did go a bit off track but I think the uh, the ratio works well um, and it doesn't look too silly or over the top so that works out well and I did actually use the same zones as they do tend to use at Santa Pod for um, the camping and one day parking so these cars you keep seeing me going back to on the right hand side just here these are for the car parking for one day so these aren't people who are going to stay over for camping these are just visitors for the one day um, and obviously over here this is where we're going to start adding some cars uh, to the car sort of club stands as well which I used to take part in many many moons ago with my own cars so that was quite cool to sort of replicate that it really did bring back some um, good memories um, of what it used to be like for myself which is pretty cool so this is bringing us to the end of episode 33 in terms of what we're doing here so the last few bits are now pretty much just detailing um, I wanted to sort of mess up the grass areas as well and the pavement to make it look a little bit more realistic at the moment it looks a little bit uh, too much and you'll see there I did have to go back to the um, festival as well because I didn't get to a stage where I was running out of uh, my props I exceeded my custom prop limit and I had to delete um, some of the people we put down in the uh, the festival zone which was quite interesting but it shows how much I used and that's why obviously the frame rate was so bad in that area but I needed to for the detail purposes um, but yeah so we're gonna add down some extra floor details and decors etc um, I wasn't too sure with the outcome in the end of the camping area it looked a little bit I don't know it looked good at some points and then other times I looked back at it and thought it looked a little bit too much but I wanted to create the sort of dirt and a little bit of grass coming through sort of feeling rather than all solid grass or all solid dirt which in my eyes wouldn't look so realistic so you have to let me know your thoughts on that guys it didn't work out too bad in the end for me I was happy enough to keep it that way um, but you'll, you'll be able to see on the final review videos a bit later on and whilst we're just detailing these last few bits, before we jump into the overview um, cinematic videos, just wanted to update you on the channel. So I've just purchased some more, well, some new um, editing software. So I'll be using that in the future. So you'll see a complete change of design of how these videos are implemented. And the only thing that I've got going on in my head now, whether I keep it or change it, is the beginning of my videos I tend to do a quick sort of uh, teaser I guess of what the final outcome is going to be and I just wanted, wanted to know how realistic that was for you guys is it is it worthwhile me keeping that going or should I just jump straight into the time lapse and sort of build up until the end and then show off the cinematics I like the idea of sort of showing a teaser to keep you interested in the video and if it's not the sort of thing you want to design obviously you can click off and it doesn't waste your time but not too sure sort of what your guys thoughts are on that so let me know um, I'll certainly keep that in consideration when I sort of you do the new templates and start my new videos which I should well you should actually start to see the new editing in progress in new videos in the next couple of weeks I've got a new project that I'm working on currently off camera 
um, which will be released in a couple of weeks time and it's hopefully something very unique and something very very new to people uh, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that you like you guys like the idea of it um, might be a bit sub sub subjective even uh, in terms of what I'm doing but I'm hoping it will give a bit of appeal and it's going to be something different to add to the uh, City Skylines uh, community as well. So keep your eyes out, a couple of weeks time you will see that along with the new editing, editing software which um, I'm hoping will do its job. And obviously the British challenge is not over yet, we still have a lot of work to do and it's more of a case now, it's more of a ticking time bomb in my eyes. Um, there's a lot of parts of the uh, map now that are pretty much impossible to build on because of how bad the um, frame rate is. It's, it's, you know, I can still build on it, but it's not going to give you guys the experience that I want you to have. It's going to look, make the videos look very, very poor, very low quality. And I think once we get to that point, we'll have to start something new. And there's a few ideas I have um, for what I want to do next in terms of a next big project build. Um, so yeah, keep, in, keep that all in mind guys, we'll carry on as we are, but that's pretty much the plan for Pug Gaming, and obviously we've got some new games on the channel, but City Skylines is the focus at the moment, it's uh, where my bread and butter is, so we're going to continue on with a lot more videos, City Skylines, and we'll um, throw in a few odd videos in the future as well, I've got a few... Um, games that have been issued to me alpha which uh, I want to show off as well which are really really cool so keep your eyes peeled and if you haven't already please sub the channel so you do not miss out so that is it episode 33 complete Santa pod is alive and thriving and I'm very pleased with this it's been a very very fun build to do for me um, a lot, a lot going on and a lot of heavy detailing as well, which isn't over the top, it just works well. And I really do love how the actual strip took place. Here we see the music stage and the car club area. We've got some Formula One cars there as well to spice things up. And this is one of my favourites as well, a little drift sort of rally stage for people to come and watch. Um, there's always one of those at Santa Pod as well, so that looks very nice. Here we have the camping area, which, like I say, wasn't too sure about how the uh, the flooring looks in terms of the grassy dirt area. But it, to be fair, on that video, it looked pretty cool. The big Santa Pod sign, which actually isn't on here in real life, it's on top of the uh, the, the um, crossing barriers. But I think that looks really cool. So, all in all, guys, I'm very pleased with this, and I hope you enjoyed watching me build this. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you. Thanks for watching, and all the best.